Since posting some content on my social media channels, I've noticed a lot of hate. There's a lot of veganism trolls out there, man. Hey, Jay, calm down, Jay, you're mocking it. Someone who isn't afraid to put his strong beliefs on veganism out there is Ed Winters, a vegan activist and educator, and he's come to join me on the set of Match of the Day X for a chat. You seem to be kind of the, the go-to guy on a lot of social media platforms to give me some insight, really, uh, with regards to kind of exploring life as a vegan. I'm guessing you haven't always been a vegan. No, I mean, I, I wasn't vegan for about 21 years of my life. I've always consumed animal products up until that point and always loved them as well. It was just mm. part of my life. Was there like a key moment for you that kind of made you go like, enough's enough, I need to shift from eating meat to becoming a vegan? I went vegetarian for a bit beforehand. Um, and the reason I did was I came across this story about a truck carrying around 6,000 chickens crashing on the way to a slaughterhouse. And I was just really upset by it because I realized these animals were suffering, but I'd never recognized that the animals I consumed did suffer. I never really thought about it. And so I kind of thought about what would happen if they got to the slaughterhouse. So I did a bit of research and just wasn't comfortable with what I saw. Um, so I went vegetarian and then I saw a documentary called Earthlings, which really mm. pushed me to veganism, which talked about what we do to animals in all these different industries. So not just food, but clothing as well. And that was really the push for me to go vegan. Veganism for me is not just about not, you know, consuming, you know, animal products. It's like a moral progression. I can tell a lot of it is to do with the, um, I suppose, the mentality of the human being. How we've been almost forced to think a certain way about certain animals, mm -hmm. like in my mind, you talk to me about a cow and you talk to me about a dog, yeah. they are two completely different things in my mind. Of course, cows and dogs are, are different animals in the same way that cows and pigs are different animals or humans and any other animal are different animals, right? But culture has determined that I view some animals differently to others. But at the same time, does that really have a bearing on where everyone is animals should be treated differently? Because dogs are a great example. And if we look across the world, we can see countries that do kill and eat dogs, but we wouldn't do that here. And we, a lot of us think that is cruelty. So for me, it was just about lining up chickens and cows and pigs and, and lambs as being really the same as dogs and cats and their right to life or right to a life free from exploitation from me. We do live in a world that sometimes isn't very understanding. Yeah. And conversations aren't as easy as maybe the one we're having right now might be different in about 20 seconds we don't know no, no. But, <laughs> but you must have come across some very confrontational situations when we talk about veganism it can be overwhelming because we're challenging culture we're challenging traditions we're challenging kind of a taste people's enjoyment people's identities and we're kind of jeopardizing a lot of what people hold close to themselves people don't want to necessarily be different i think people want to feel integrated within a society it makes us feel safe it makes us feel like we belong and the notion of veganism Although it's not that radical necessarily, it feels like we're taking a step out of what's considered normal. Yeah. And I think that's very frightening. You need conversation to try and help people maybe process why it's important. What I have noticed, and I think you're the first person that may have brought this to my attention, is actually the power isn't in how good you can make something taste like chicken or a burger taste great without any meat in it. The power seems to be in the knowledge I think everything in this world can be, can be helped through just education and right? knowledge. I mean, I think a lot of us are ignorant about what happens because we just don't know. And so I think education and knowledge is power, right? Knowledge is power. And I think the more that we can have knowledge, the more we can empower ourselves to make decisions that we, we agree with and believe in. Is your girlfriend a vegan? She is. You may have children at some stage. Are you already set out in your mind that they will be raised as vegans or would it be their option to become what they want to become? If I have children, then they will be raised vegan. Yeah. And, and Sometimes people get criticism because they say, well, you're forcing veganism on your kids. Mm. It's like, well, I mean, no child actually volunteers to eat animals. Every diet we force on our children because our children can't make decisions at the beginning, right? So I don't see it as forcing veganism any more than forcing meat. Often we have to, it's not that we lie, but we just hide something from our kids yeah. to make it more palatable to them. You know, they watch Peppa Pig on TV yeah. whilst eating a bacon sandwich, but they, because they just don't know, right? So I think that there's a disconnect with our children. And for me, I would raise my kids vegan because um, it's healthier, it's better for the environment. And I think it aligns with what they would want as well. It is the animals that keep me going. But the environment is a huge factor now. Yeah. And it's becoming such a forefront of veganism that I think it's something that we have to be aware of. And it's not just like a, you know, a vegan issue anymore. What happens to our environment is going to affect every single one of us. And so we do have a responsibility to look at our actions. And veganism is, has been proven scientifically to be the single biggest thing that we can do as individuals to lower our impact on the environment. Yeah. Can you just give me a bit more like 
information on that? If the world adopted a plant-based diet, we could do something called reforest 75% of global um, agricultural land. So that creates an environment for more trees, more shrubberies, more hedge grows, um, also more biodiversity of, of wildlife, plant life, but also animals as well. And it creates a more harmonious ecosystem. But there are so many factors environmentally that I think we can get hung up on just methane or carbon dioxide or nitrous. Yeah. But there's so many different elements. And I just say, have a look into it yourself and, and, and do a bit of research and see what you think.